Good morning, YouTube. My name is Amos Bruin. For this, the 23rd edition of the anime review series, we are going to the 1990s. Yes, we're going virtually to my very beginnings of anime. And it's not something we get to do much, to be honest. Most series we covered pretty much are fairly recent. Now, when I say recent, we're talking within the 2000s, okay? Or it's an anime that came out last year or two years ago. We don't usually do animes this old. But there's a benefit to that, trust me. Because now we're going to educate ourselves. And that's one of the purposes of this series. Not just to review them, but to educate and inform. I want you to take a look at this. Do you recognize this young lady? We well, should. This is Toskino Yosagi from the hit anime Sailor Moon. Now it had its original run. <coughs> excuse me. March 7th, 1992 to February 8th of 1997. So think about it. That anime is going to be 18 years old this year. You got that? Alright. The one we're covering tonight, Card Captor Sakura, will be 15 years old as of March 21st, 2000. Hmm. March 21st. Hey, that was my brother's birthday. No joke. He was born on March 21st. 21st, 22nd. Eh, around there. So give or take. It was literally on my brother's birthday when the show ended in 2000. Now, we're covering car characters, so we don't need to see her. Well, we kind of do, but you, you'll, you'll understand. Car characters is about a young woman named Sakura Kinamoto. And she has a very interesting family. Her father is named Fujitaka. Her mother, who is deceased, is named Nishiko. Her brother, who plays an important role in the series, is named Toya. Her friend is named uh, Tomoyo. And one of the best friends of Toya is named Yokito Sukeshiro. By the way, for those wondering why I didn't name the give the last names of some of the other characters, it's because I legitimately cannot pronounce them. <laughs> so I'm not going to even try. Um, and this story is actually a really... It's a very interesting one to try and review for a few reasons. First off, we we are looking at specifically the seventy episode uh, English subversion, not the thirty nine episode English dub. I want you to keep that in mind, because when the series came out here in the U.S., first off it was re it was renamed Car Captors. Sakura was named Avalon, and some other elements in the series were actually removed. They also redid the theme song. Which, by the way, isn't that bad, but some people will actually crap on it. Okay. We also need to go over a few other things. Um, around the time... Excuse me. Around the time that, say, Car Captors and Sailor Moon were coming out here, the internet wasn't readily available. Or was still pretty much in its infancy. So, knowing some things about the characters that we know today wasn't exactly possible for the most part in the 1990s when these shows were coming out. But, what we come to find out through the 70 episodes of Car Captors is there's a very interesting story. However, over the course of three seasons, the pacing can sometimes be one of the biggest detriments. 
Uh, let's start from the beginning, though. So, I mentioned about the family. Okay. Well, Sakura is a part of a cheerleading squad at Tomomeda uh, Elementary School. When the series starts, she's in the fourth grade. When it ends, she's in the fifth grade, second trimester. Her brother goes to the high school along with his friend uh, Yukido. Yukido. Um, now, they're seeing a lot together. And they do something very interesting in this series that if you think about the way some animes are done today, it's actually amazing that they don't take notes from this series. Uh, how do I explain this? Alright. First off, there will be some spoilers in here. Okay. You have two characters in Toya and Yukio. Toya, Toya is technically, technically bisexual. However, Yukido is in canon get open he well he's gay. We're not gonna say openly gay, but he's gay. Okay. Here is where they do something pretty freaking amazing. See they don't make it so bloody obvious. They don't literally make it like, you know you need to literally put a neon sign over their heads and go, here's your Here's your gay character, here's your bisexual. So that is one of the biggest pluses. And it's so funny the way they also handle the ca a character like Yuki. Because they do something interesting. At least in the first season. Second season, it's almost, the story's almost driven around him. The first season, here's what they do. They will give him, um... Maybe sometimes an entire episode that is, the story is built around him. Or, they'll give him a cameo in an episode. Usually if they give him basically a cameo in an episode, you know there's an episode coming, or an episode two, that maybe back to back, that he's going to be part of the main focus. You know that's going to happen. And I don't mind that. It's an interesting plot device, and why I sometimes wish that would be used a bit more, but it depends on the way you look at things. The way they told the story in this series when it comes to him, especially when it comes to Toya, and especially when it comes to Sakura, is a very interesting um, dynamic. But I haven't really gotten into the actual story of this series yet, have I? Been rambling for a minute. All right. Sakura Kinomoto goes to Tomomeda Elementary High School. Can't mention that. One day she comes home and nobody else is home. And she hears a bit of a rumbling in the basement of her house. Well, when she goes in there, there's a big old, there's a bunch of bookshelves. And one of the books uh, she's never seen before. She's probably been down there a billion times, but she's not seen this book. Well, she had been look at it, and there's a latch on it, and there's a picture of a lion. Well, because she's the, you, you know how fourth graders are, they're curious. She opens up the latch, and a bunch of cards come flying out of there, and they scatter all over Tomato City. Tomato City. Well... Um, that's where our story begins. Now, we have about 50 plus cars that are scattered throughout the city. It's Sakura's job to get them back in the book because of the fact that she was the one that released them in the first place. But how is she going to do that? I mean, there's no way she's going to know where all the cars are, right? Ah, okay. On the cover of the book, 
there was a lion. That lion is named Kiro. And Kiro starts out literally almost like a plush toy. Kind of something like this. Okay, not a person, but you get the idea. That's what he pretty much looks like in his false form. That's important later. The first 46 episodes of the series, the first two seasons basically, is Sakura trying to capture and reclaim all of the cloud cards. And this is a lot trickier than you think. Because, the way the story is told, it's not just her that's looking for them. Nope. Around episode 8, we introduce a new character. Uh, Seiran Lee. He's from Hong Kong. He is a descendant of Cloud Reed. Now, I should mention that Cloud Reed is the creator of the cards. That's why they're called Cloud Cards. Um... He wants all the cars, and he wants to become the new master. That is the goal that Sakura is tasked with, becoming the new master. Well, um, here's the thing. There's over 50 cars, and they're scattered all throughout the city. Do you realize how hard it's going to be? Like I mentioned around episode 8, you meet Lee Siran. Around episode, I don't know, 20 something, we meet Meilin Lee. They're cousins. But they're also engaged. Yes, there's an interesting promise that's there, and I'm not going to spoil that for you. Because it's an interesting plot device, trust me. We also eventually meet a new teacher named Mizuki Sensei. We meet her at the, towards the end of season one. We meet, of course, as I've mentioned, the father, Fujitaka. We sort of get introduced to Neda Shiko, the mother. Toria Yukido. Uh, Tomoyo, who has a very interesting job. She becomes part of the car capturing team. What makes her interesting is, well, <clears throat> I mentioned about uh, Yuki, right? Well, let's mention about Tomio. She actually has a, she has a crush, we'll say, <laughs> on um, Sakura. Yes. So what we have here... <laughs> is before it became like a really big thing in you know forms of entertainment you literally have three parts of the LBG, LGBT community in this series you have literally one bisexual one gay open one gay character and one <laughs> lesbian you know it's like that's literally the way it worked out I thought it was kind of funny, to be honest. But, what do you want to do? Um, it's actually, no, but, it's, but it actually works out, though, because when you see the way the relationships work, it goes from being comical, because it's at some points it is kind of funny, to you're able to really focus on the story again. But, What's really interesting is, I mentioned Sierra, right? When he meets Yuki for the first time, his face gets all red and shit. <laughs> and he's consistently trying to give the dude food. There's a reason for this that comes up in the final two episodes. I'm not going to mention it, though. Well, the final two episodes, I should say, of season two. Okay, when we meet all these characters, from Mizuki, we meet Kiro, we meet um, Yuki, we meet Toya, we meet 
Fujitaka, we meet um, Hideshiko, Terada, the homeroom teacher. We meet all these people, and this is just pretty much in season one, okay? We meet Kiro. There couldn't possibly be any more by else we need to meet, right? Hold up. I mentioned that one of the goals in the first two seasons is to collect all the cloud cards. Well, let's get down to why all the cloud cards are important. When all the cloud cards are assembled, especially whatever the final one is, it actually triggers a very important thing that happens. Do you remember that I mentioned about false forms and true forms? Well, Kiddo's true form is called Cerebus. Let's talk about Yuki. He's not human. His true form is called Yue. And he is a bit of a grump. <laughs> Just a little bit. His uh, goal, or his job in the first season, or the second season rather, is to conduct what is called the final judgment. The final judgment determines who becomes the rightful owner of the cloud cards. And this actually proves important because when we get to season three. Okay. We need to talk about the way they handled the final judgment. And we're going to also talk about when we get to season three about the uh, importance of the finale. Because they kind of botched it just a little bit as far as I'm concerned. Okay. The Final Judgment is where Yui tells the card captors, you have to beat me with the cards you have. And if you can't, then all the memories are erased of everyone you know. Every single one. You would think with his severe penalty for losing, as there is, these kids aren't just going to use cloud guards, they're going to want to kick this guy all over the place. Okay, let's skip right to Sakura's. Here's the thing. Do I understand that Sakura is a fourth grader? Yes. Not even mad about But here's the thing. It, there's a part of me that looks at the way it was given. You're given, here's the consequence if she loses. So you're thinking she's going to go both barrels of guns blazing and try to beat him. The problem is because of the... the the attraction as it is at this point she has this really hard time wanting to fight him because of who she knew him to be now this in turn makes things a bit trickier and some other things are revealed during the final judgment one of course is Involving Mizuki-san. And I'll let you figure out what that is. Of course, we all know the way it goes in the end because of the fact that there's a season three. Now, when we get to season three, though, the story becomes different. Now, I'm thinking at this point, okay, so she captured all the cards. What are they going to make her do next? In season three, now she has to take every card she's got and convert them to hers. With a new wand, by the way. The original wand she used was the one that Cloud Reed had. Now the one she uses 
is one that she created. And she uses her own magic circle. That's the big thing. But here's where it gets tricky. Not only does she have to change the cards over to Sakura cards, she has to deal with a new nemesis. And this nemesis is named uh, Eriol. E-R-I-O-L. He also, she also has to deal with two other people. Spinel's son and then Ruby Moon. And that is the only way I will recognize her. The reason is because the character was so annoying that I literally, at one point, at a protest, refused to acknowledge her by her proper name. See the problem? The thing of it is, with, when, you, when you look at this see, when you look at this series, and I should mention this, during the Cloud Cars part, you have this build up to this character named Yui. Who is Yui? What is his purpose when we meet him? Well, when we get to the point where we meet him, we see that he's not somebody you exactly, you know, treat with kid gloves. You have to want to face him or you're going to have a problem. Unfortunately, when you get to that final judgment, and trust me, I'm not, look, let me say this right now. Season 1 drug like a son of a bitch. It was 35 episodes. It was literally half the series. The second season was 11 episodes and was actually one of the better paced seasons, period, episode wise and storytelling wise. It didn't feel like it was dragging. Season 3 was a bit of a different problem. And season 3, I'll tell you what happened here. Season 2 kind of repaired the damage season 1 had, but then season 3 comes and says, well, fuck that, we're just what we're going to do. Season 3 decides we're going to tell this story. When we tell it, we're going to get you so annoyed that you almost don't care with the ending. And when we get to the final episode, it, it, it almost sort of kind of falls flat a little bit. Because, okay, the final judgment of Season 2 was basically a two-part episode because you had Seran and then you had uh, Sakura. Okay. Get to the third season, get to the final battle with Ariel, who we find out is a reincarnation of Cloud Reed, and his minions, Spinel Sun and Ruby Moon, and they do that in one episode. Meanwhile, the final episode is then kind of just there. They don't really do a whole lot. So you're kind of sitting there wondering, watching it like, what the hell? Granted, they do bring back Mizu uh, Mizuki Sensei. And they do reveal other things like, oh, by the way. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, what the hell is your... What the, what the hell, dude? And it gets even better when you find out about Yui's, like, true intentions towards the end. It's, it's hard because I was trying to make this a short video. Well, that wasn't going to happen. The first season... Let's do it this way. The first season was good, but... I had to take a break from it because it was dragging so bad that I literally was losing interest in it. Then I came back and started to finish it. Okay. Then we get to season two, which is literally 11 episodes long. First of all, it didn't ever stay, it's welcome. So it actually did a really good job of building to the Final Judgment episodes, which I properly enjoyed. Except for, I feel like they kind of wussed out on the end of the, on the end of the season. Season three, I would have had less of a problem 
if it was Clow versus um, Sakura and he didn't have the two minions or those two minions actually did something outside of just the final episodes so I'm like not sitting here going do something you idiots because that frustrated me to literally no end and it, it, it drives me absolutely crazy one of the best episodes of the entire third season was the episode when you have Yui and you have Ceteris in the house together. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, okay, how does... How do you explain having Yui, who's actually taller than um, Yukito, in, in your house? And I'm like, hmm. One episode that I thought was really well done was episode 60 of the third season, anyway. Episode 62. Here's what happened. Um, they were going to a festival. And I'll give you the final verse in a second. They're going to a festival and Sakura... Excuse me. And they could, Sakura's looking for Yuki. Well, they couldn't find him. Yuki ends up Excuse me. Toy ends up going back to Yuki's place to go find him. He finds out he's passed out at his entrance, entrance to his home. And here, Yui got so, shall we say, hungry that he was literally eating the energy from the kid and trying to kill him from the inside. And this plays a huge part in one of the episodes later, a little bit later on in the final episodes and trust me when I tell you it, it got to me a little bit now then if we were to judge this strictly on the way season 3 went I would say avoid this series like the plague season 2 I say was about a B was about a B plus to an A season 3 I'll give about a C plus. Or, excuse me. Season one, I'll give about a C plus. Season three, because of the way I think they did things, it's hard for me to give it a really good grade. It would be about a D. Yeah, barely passing. Does Car Captor Sakura stand the test of time? That is the question, and that is why this video is taking so long. In my honest to God opinion, that answer is no it does not I could not recommend this show to anyone okay I'll, I'll actually take that back it's not bad but you have to understand that the first two seasons is literally the bulk of the story and when you get to season three they rush it so bad they rush it so much that you don't really have time to develop the story of the other three characters that they introduce so you're kind of yeah you kind of like don't know what to, how to feel about them outside of one's annoying and the other one just sits there for the most part that, that's literally the way it is and here's the thing people are going to say I'm Maybe too rough on it. No, you know what? If you watch this review, and you watch the whole 30 minutes or whatever it is, and you are so angered by this that I trashed the series or that I didn't give it a higher grade, then you need to understand what a review is, and you need to understand what an opinion is, and you need to sit down and watch all 70 episodes, then you make the goddamn video, and then you tell me what it is. And you send me the video with your opinion. Seriously. Because until you do that, you don't give the right you don't get the right to give me your opinion. And I know I'm gonna get the defense squad on me about it, but I don't care. I've been watching anime for about 17 years. Okay? And I really got back into it full time recently when I started reviewing full time. Don't tell me 
that I reviewed this wrong because I know what I look for in series and apparently you look for something a lot different. So, final grade. It's not bad, but it's average. So I'll take that back. I won't say it's a D. It's about a C, C plus. Okay? Now then, you all take care. The next time I see you will be February the 2nd. When we will start Boys Love Month on the channel. Take care now. Bye-bye.